There are many reasons to start going to the gym. Catherine Fennelly had only one. There was just something inside of me. I just had to get out. After years of watching her son descend into a black hole of addiction, hitting a heavy bag helped relieve her anger and frustration at a treatment system she says at best operates like a revolving door. They would send him in, detox him, and then there would be nothing and send him on his merry way. Well, they didn't do anything but just get him over the hump. Because he went right back to using. Right back. She says her son Paul started using drugs as a teenager and, like many others swept into the opioid crisis, went from prescription pills to a cheaper and deadlier alternative, heroin. Paul died last winter of an overdose. He was 21. But he tried hard. Catherine says right up to the end, there were times when he asked for help, seemed ready to try detox again. And that's when she saw an overburdened system at its worst, when she was told... That there's no beds. There's nothing out there. And they literally handed me a paper with a list of detoxes to call. And did you? Yeah. And what was the response when you called the detoxes? We have no beds. The same thing they just did. And that's what I'm saying. I'm like, this system's so broken. But right now we're pretty full. This detox in Boston, like others across the Commonwealth, is almost always full. People seeking treatment are turned away. Is the system broken? There are parts of the system that are broken. Kevin Norton is the CEO of Leahy Behavioral Health Services, which runs this detox and other addiction treatment centers. He says detox is often the first step toward treatment, but it doesn't always need to be. Ideally, he says, anyone who calls a center like this one would be evaluated and directed to the specific care they need. But in our current fee-for-service environment, we don't get paid to do that, and so with an 1% operating margin, that becomes a real huge challenge for us to figure out how do we staff to do things that we're not getting paid to, even though it's in the best interest of the patient and the client. And he acknowledges the same shortcoming Catherine Fennelly points out, that too often people cycle in and out of detox. What's needed, he says, aren't necessarily more detox beds, but more slots for people ready for the next step, longer term treatment that ideally leads to recovery. One, two, one, two. Catherine could not save her son. Fire it out, fire it out. But she is doing this, opening up her weekly workouts to others who are experiencing the fear and frustration. Breathe, 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 breathe. And anger that goes along with caring for an addict. It's a different feeling now when I go to the group and I box and I see those other people that are there for the same reason and I'm helping them. It makes me feel good. Like, maybe my son's death wasn't in vain. Something good can come of it. Let it out, Catherine, let it out. Stephanie Leiden, WGBH News.